1-2 is about fluently dividing whole numbers and decimals. In this lesson, we'll be able to divide whole numbers and decimals. Let's look at solve and discuss it. Some friends went to lunch and split the bill equally. If each person paid $6.75, how many people went to lunch? Use a diagram or equation to explain your thinking. So total is $27, and we divide it by the number of people we have so that we're paying equally, right? Um, we know that each person paid $6.75. So $27 divided by something is $6.75. What does that mean? Divided by 6 n, a number n is equal to 6.75. So that means, also means, 27 divided by 6.75 is also n. Why? Because 27 divided by n equals 6.75 means n times 6.75 is equal to 27. So if we divide 27 by 6.75, we would get n. How many people were there? So divide this and see if you get the correct answer. What did you get? It should be four people, right? How did you do it? You make sure that the decimal place is moved. So 27 divided by 6.75. You can move the decimal pl places, two places to the right and say you have zero, zero here. Annex the zeros. And you can say 675 goes into 2700 exactly four times. 2700. And you have a remainder of zero. Okay. Let's look at focus on math practices on the bottom. Suppose $7 was added to the bill for a dessert that everyone shared. How much more does each person have to pay? So we're gonna, we're gonna add a dessert. We decided to um, add a brownie or something, right? And so everyone is gonna share, which means everyone will also equally pay for that dessert. How much more does each person have to pay? So additionally, from 6.75, how much more would one person pay, right? So $7 is the extra payment that we didn't pay yet. So we just have to divide that equally by the number of people we have. Fortunately, we already figured out the number of people above. It's four people, right? So we're going to divide seven. Seven by four. And get $1.75. So each person would pay $1.75. Okay. How do you divide whole number by whole number? So 7 divided by 4, you would say 4 goes into 7 one time. But then you have a remainder of 3. So you're going to put a decimal place here and annex a 0. And 4 goes into 38 times. 8 times 4 is 28. And then you get a remainder of 2. And annex a 0. And you know 4 goes into 20 exactly 5 times. And you can stop there.
Oh, I'm so sorry. Not eight. It's seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight. I was mentally thinking about it. All right, let's go to the next page. Example one. We're gonna divide whole numbers by whole numbers. So throughout this lesson, think about how we can divide whole numbers and decimals. Okay, a tortilla bakery makes 863 packages of tortillas to sell to restaurants. Each restaurant receives the same number of packages as a complete order. How many restaurants can receive a complete order? There are 18 packages in a complete order. So when we're counting packages, if we have 17 packages, is that a complete order? No. If you have 17 packages, you're almost there, but it's not a complete order. So you do not count 17 packages as one complete order. Only when you have exactly 18, you can count it as a complete order. So you're going to divide 863 by 18 to see how many complete orders can we have for 863 packages of tortillas. And whatever the remainder is, it's probably going to be less than 18. So if we have a remainder, that doesn't count. Okay? So... You're going to start with 863 here, divide by 18. We're going to start by dividing the tens. 18 goes into 86 four times. 18 times four is 72. If you subtract 86 minus 72, you get 14. And then you put down three and you get 143. 18 goes into 143 seven times um, by 126. And you subtract them as well, you get a remainder of 17. So, remainder of 17 again. Is that a complete order? No, 17 is not a complete order. So, how many complete orders do we have when we have 863 packages? 47. The bakery can sell complete orders to 47 restaurants. Okay. Whoops, I don't want that. No. Forty seven restaurants. Okay. Let's look at try it on the bottom. Workers at an electronics company pack 2,610 smartphones in boxes. Each box holds nine smartphones. How many boxes do they fill? Again, each box has to hold nine smartphones. It cannot be less than it is not a complete box. So, you're going to divide 2,610 by nine here. And they already tell you that the remainder is going to be zero. So you have a nice little whole number as an answer. How many boxes do they fill? So take time and think about it and solve it. Come back when you're ready for answers. How many boxes do they fill? Yeah. So 9 goes into 26, how many times? 2 times, 9 times 2 is 18, 26 minus 18 is 8, and then you put down 1, 9 times what is 81? Exactly 9, okay? And then you get a remainder of zero. Zero comes down, so zero. You still have to put zero. Nine goes into zero, zero times because there is a decimal point right here. So you don't, you do not stop in 29. 
it's actually 290 because that is a hundreds place this is a tens place you have to annex a zero if there is no digit okay so how many boxes do they fill 290 boxes okay convince me why is the first digit of the quotient in the try it not the same place as the first digit of the quotient in example one why is the first digit two not the same place as the first digit in example one four why which place is two in it's the hundreds place right which place is four in example one in it's on the tens place so what can we say the first digit of the quotient in the triad represents two hundreds so the two is in the hundreds place okay but then the first digit of the quotient in example one represents four tens so the four is in the tens place okay All right, that was example one. Let's look at the next page, example two. Divide whole numbers by whole numbers with decimal quotients. How can you write decimal quotient when dividing whole numbers? So let's find 100 divided, 180 divided by eight. Whole number divided by a whole number. So when you have a remainder of four here, you can keep going on by adding a decimal place right here. You know that 22 uh, comes before the decimal place because 180 has a decimal place after zero. So that should align with each other. So when you want to continue solving for it and add zero, make sure you put a decimal place after 22. And 8 times 5 is exactly 40, so you would have a, a remainder of zero eventually but you would have a decimal as an answer 22.5 okay example three dividing decimals use the division algorithm to divide with decimals part a we're going to divide 809.4 dollars divided by 12. so in diagram if we say this whole thing is 809.4 we're going to equally divide this by 12 parts we have total of 12 ends here we can use compatible numbers to estimate and then divide exactly 809 809.4 is close to 840 hmm why do we use 840 instead of 800 because we're thinking about compatible numbers, okay? What is compatible with 12? 12 has a multiple of 24, 48, and then 72. Is it compatible to 80? 840 is more compatible. Okay, so that's why we put 840. So 840 divided by 12 is 70. Obviously, we, we rounded it up. So our answer should be less than 70. Okay, so you can use estimation to figure out where approximately your answer is going to be. So now let's solve this division. 809.4 divided by 12, you're going to put 
6 times 12, 72, subtract. 8, comes, 8 is remainder, 9 comes down. 7 times 12 is 84, subtract 89 minus 84. 5 is the remainder, and put down 4. 4 comes down, and remain, remember to put your decimal place, decimal point after 7 because 809 has a decimal point right after 9. And 7 corresponds to 9 here. They're the same place value. So we need to put the decimal place here. And continue solving until you get a remainder of 0. So your exact answer should be 67.45. Okay. In the same way, you can solve part B 4.5. 2 divided by 1.4 like that but when you're dividing with a decimal number it's not a whole number right then you have to make it a whole number you can move two decimal places away to get 140 uh, 140 and 420 or you can just move one decimal place over and get and get 42 divided by 14. They're the same thing. You're gonna get the same answer, okay? But just remember that you move the decimal place together. You cannot just move a decimal place on one number, okay? If you put a decimal place on a divisor, you're gonna put a decimal place on the dividend. All right, so 4.2 divided by 1.4 should be exactly three. All right, let's see if you can do it by yourself. Look at try it, divide A, B, and C. See if you can get, if you can get the answer. Come back when you're ready for answer. Okay, are you ready? 65 divided by eight is not exactly a whole number but you're gonna put 8 times 8 and 64 remainder of 1 right put a decimal place and get a 0 down 8 times 1 goes into 10 and then you get a remainder of 2 20 so 8 times 2 will go into 20 by 16. Subtract 16 from 20, you get remainder of 4, and you get you add a 0, 40. 8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times. So 8.125 should be your exact answer. Okay, what about part B? 14.4 divided by 8. You got 1.8, that is correct. Part C, 128.8 divided by 1.4. You should get an exact nice whole number of 92. Okay, check your answers. If you got all of them correct, good job. Please continue practicing just in case. Uh, you make a mistake, practice is only good for you. All right, let's summarize our lesson. The key concept here is that when we divide by a decimal, we have to rewrite the decimal so that you're dividing by a whole number like that. And make sure you put the decimal place at the correct place. All right, that was lesson 1-2, fluently dividing whole numbers and decimals. You can keep practicing below. Um, and if you have any more questions, you can ask Ms. Kang in class. Um, otherwise, we'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.